Holbrook Travel is pleased to bring you this webinar today, exploring the tropical rainforest and ecosystems of Costa Rica with the Florida Museum of Natural History. Today, we'll be talking about two exciting intergenerational travel programs hosted by the museum this summer, the Family Rainforest Camp and the Youth Photography Workshop. These special travel programs are designed for families with children and young adults, and they'll use the rainforest of Costa Rica as a fun backdrop for hands-on learning about tropical ecosystems, biodiversity, photography, and scientific investigation. We're excited to be joined today by the expert museum scientists and specialists who will be facilitating these workshops. For each program, we'll hear first from Lisa Palmisi Graubard from Holbrook Travel. She'll give us an overview and briefly walk us through the itinerary. And then the museum leaders will share more in depth about the different experiences and edu educational components of each program. We'll hear from David Blackburn and Lucas Major, who'll tell us about the Family Rainforest Camp. And then we'll hear from Kristen Grace and Alberto Lopez, the instructors for the Youth Photography Workshop. At the end, we'll discuss the current requirements for traveling to Costa Rica, including COVID protocols and health and safety information. And we'll have time for questions, so please feel free to enter those in the Q&A box at any point. The first program we'll hear about today is the Family Rainforest Camp, which is led by David Blackburn and Lucas Major. Dave Blackburn is the Florida Museum's Curator of Herpetology. In his role at the Florida Museum, Dave oversees research and curation of the museum's scientific collection of amphibians and reptiles, which is among the top 10 of such collections in the US and the largest in the Southeastern United States. After completing college at the University of Chicago, he did his PhD at Harvard University, followed by three years as a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Kansas, and then four years as a curator at the California Academy of Sciences. The research by Dave and his students focuses on the diversity, evolution, and conservation of amphibians and reptiles. To date, he has described 27 new species of frogs from Africa, South America, and Asia. Dave's work has been featured in the New York Times, National Geographic, the magazine Science, the children's book, When Lunch Fights Back by Rebecca Johnson, and Christopher Kemp's recent book, The Lost Species. Lucas Major is curator of the University of Florida Herbarium at the Florida Museum of Natural History. He is a plant systematist interested in understanding the diversity of green plants on the planet and actively works to describe that diversity, especially in the Americas. Lucas is especially interested in the cactus family, as well as other diverse neotropical plant families in both humid and dry forests of the Caribbean, one of the focal areas of his research. He earned his PhD at the University of Florida in 2012 and came back to work as a professor, researcher, and curator in the museum in fall of 2018. We'll also hear from Kristen Grace and Alberto Lopez about the Youth Photography Workshop. Kristen is the award-winning resident photographer and digital asset manager at the Florida Museum. And Alberto Lopez is the museum's school outreach coordinator. And they'll be telling you a little bit more about themselves and their backgrounds when they talk about the photo workshop. Last but not least, Lisa Palmisi Graubard has been a specialty travel consultant with Holbrook Travel for 32 years. Lisa has a passion for educational travel and working with leaders and organizations to create magical field experiences that serve their mission. In her free time, Lisa loves spending time with her family, being a mom to her daughter, and anything that involves being in and around water. Uh, so at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lindsay. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining us today. I um, have the honor of giving an overview of the relationship between Holbrook Travel and the Florida Museum of Natural History. It began um, back in the 70s when our founder Giovanna Holbrook and UF professor um, Dr. Tom Emmel did their pioneering voyage to the Galapagos Islands. From there, they formed a lifelong friendship based on the love of learning and travel, and their adventures took them all over the world exploring, learning, and helping build the Florida Museum's Lepidoptera collections. In 1982, Mrs. Holbrook purchased the 500 acres where Selva Verde now stands. With Dr. Emil by her side, she built Selva Verde from a house that hosted visiting researchers to the Eco Lodge and Rainforest Reserve it is today. Mrs. Holbrook's dream of preserving the 500 acres of endangered tropical forest has become a premier eco destination that offers accessible primary forests and attracts nature enthusiasts from all over the world. Our biodiversity and abundance of species that range from macaws to monkeys to red-eyed tree frogs and sloth 
definitely makes Selva Verde the perfect site for the Florida Museum of Natural History's Costa Rica programs. The Serapiki area where Selva Verde is located offers many activities outside of the lodge. Things that um, are included in the program will be a visit to the Serapiki Conservation Learning Center, where you'll meet with community members and learn about life in rural Costa Rica, take a boat ride on the Serapiki River, visit a local cacao plantation to learn where chocolate comes from, from seed to the finished project, product. Excuse me. Um, this summer's program will be the museum's third annual rainforest camp in Costa Rica. The camps have been accompanied by museum scientists as well as Costa Rican naturalist guides. Through hikes, interactive learning activities, and hands-on um, learning, your kids will learn the importance of conservation and reforestation projects. Um, they'll see firsthand how ornithologists look and listen for birds, including toucans and parrots. Um, they'll search for the many frog and lizard species that call the lodge home. And they'll also have the opportunity to meet kids from the community as they get to know each other through games and interactive play. And that has always been a very enriching part of the program. Um, that's not involved in the scientific part, but it is definitely a big part of the experience with the museum. And um, now that I've given you a, a, a brief overview of the program, I would like to hand it off to uh, Dr. Blackburn and Dr. Majeur. Great, thank you, Lisa. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to see some familiar names and the uh, attendees here today. So, um, so I'm Dave um, and we started this trip several years ago with Andrea um, and Holbrook and uh, I'm excited to share a little bit more about it here. So this is, as Lisa noted, my third time doing it. This is the fifth time we've tried to do it. So we're two years canceled in between. Um, and now I'm excited to, to add another uh, scientist officially on this trip, uh, Dr. Lucas Majur. Lucas, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, Dave. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, um, likewise, I'm super excited to be part of this uh, trip. I've done uh, quite a bit of work in Costa Rica and I've uh, actually taught in Costa Rica uh, before for the Organization for Tropical Studies. And so this is a really great opportunity uh, for me to uh, show you guys some plants as well. So next slide. So my primary goal uh, in setting up this trip is to find a way to get families uh, out into the rainforest to hear, smell, touch, and see uh, these incredible forests and the things that are inside of them. Um, next slide. So mo most of our week is spent in and around Selva Verde Lodge. And to me, a primary goal is to give you an opportunity to get out into these uh, rainforests together. Lucas, as a botanist, do you have anything you'd like to add about these type of forests and why they're special? Yeah, absolutely. Um, these are incredible forests that there are lots of different forest types that you find in Costa Rica, but these are especially wonderful to play around in because there's such an amazing diversity of plants. And of course, that amazing diversity of plants is also providing a lot of uh, homes and shelter for the animals that you'll be seeing as well. Um, but I think one thing that, you know, we'll, we'll definitely focus on within these truly amazingly diverse forests are just all the different growth forms that you see in, in, in plants and all the major groups of plants that are uh, represented in these, these amazingly diverse tropical forests. So you can see lots of different palms in this photo, but um, uh, there is an incredible diversity from all over sort of the plant tree of life that we'll be taking a look at. Next slide. So in addition, we will see a terrific diversity of animals. Uh, and not only will we see them, but we also show you how to see them. Uh, because many of these animals take you know, a lot of work uh, and actually in order to see out there in the wild. So this includes uh, monkeys, uh, so like howler monkeys, and spider monkeys. Uh, this will include frogs. I study frogs, so we will see a lot of frogs. Uh, but basilisk lizards, sloths. Um, it is a really remarkable place. Um, 
to see an awful lot without having to go very far. And as a parent, uh, I can appreciate the fact that it's a great opportunity to, you know, have kids where, you know, we're not driving several hours every day to go to a different site to see this. It, it's all basically around us. Um, and being able to live there and see these animals, even on a daily basis sometimes, uh, is a really pretty special part um, of this trip. So, um, you know, I'm a zoologist, and so in the past, that's a lot of what we focused on are the animals that we see. But this year, of course, we're lucky to have Lucas. Um, do next slide, please. And, and part of my, my hope here is that, you know, Lucas is a world-class expert on the plants of uh, South America, Central America, and the Caribbean. And this really provides an, a cool opportunity to see amazing things. Do you want to say anything specific about some of the things here? Yeah, sure, sure. So I, I uh, you know, put these photos together for you guys to kind of, you know, get an idea of what you might be seeing in, in this part of Costa Rica. You know, it's beautiful tropical rainforest. Uh, you have these really large, amazing trees, oftentimes the trees. So if you focus your eyes on the left hand part of this uh, screen, you'll see this really large tree, but it's actually covered in other types of vegetation, right? Um, and so uh, one thing that we'll be able to do at Selva Verde Lodge is, is really dig into all of the amazing sort of mosaic of, of vegetation that you see in these areas. And so, so what I'll um, really want us to do is, is, is dig into that, you know, look at as, as, try to find as many things as we can in these really amazing forests. And I think once we start digging in, uh, we'll all realize that there's a lot more diversity than you might see when you first look out into the forest. So we'll start, we'll try to tease some of that the diversity apart and give everybody a really nice idea of, of why these forests are so absolutely incredible and why they're so important as well. Next slide. So in creating this trip, um, the, the, to me, the focus of this trip was kids and having a, tri a, a, a trip that was uh, easy uh, for families, uh, having a trip that was really focused on providing kids with opportunities to be kids and not be dragged along on a grown-up trip. Um, having my own children, I can appreciate, uh, you know, the feeling of being dragged along with a bunch of grown-ups. So this is really a trip that's about kids and that kids will enjoy. And so this includes even, you know, going uh, to meet other kids, uh, Costa Rican kids, uh, and do activities with them, see Costa Rican kids dancing, hanging out with Costa Rican kids for an afternoon. And of course, you know, we also tend to have a, a pretty good group of kids even within our own group. So, you know, it, it, there's a lot of opportunities here for, for kids to make friends and interact with each other and do things, you know, a little bit independently, but in a pretty controlled environment of, of the lodge. Um, and it's, so we, we can allow exploration, but also uh, keep people safe. All right, next slide. Uh, we're also really well set up for multi-generational families. Um, every trip that I have led has had grandparents on it, which has been great. So I think the last trip we, we led was from, I know we had a six-year-old, and I think we might have pushed 80, potentially, um, with our oldest participant, and we've had everyone in between. And so, you know, the forests but around the lodge are accessible and easy to walk uh, through. Uh, there's a bridge, like the one shown here, that goes across the river over to the main bit of forest. Uh, it, it looks tall, but it's an, it's an easy walk. Uh, you know, there's even uh, rubber boots around if you wanna uh, sort of put those on instead of your regular shoes and the days, some days can get really muddy. Uh, so it, there is, is a sense of, you know, this stuff is really right outside of your door uh, to be able to access a lot of these amazing places. All right, next. So as a scientist, you know, I'm really excited to get kids doing some of the things that scientists do, right? To use tools like scientists use, uh, to show kids like how does, how does scientists actually do this stuff, you know? Like whether or not that's using an aspirator or a pooter on the left to uh, collect ants, which is pretty fun. It's a pretty simple piece of equipment, but it's what a lot of ant biologists use. Or showing them how to, you know, beat plants, sorry, Lucas, so you beat plants with a stick and collect, you know, all of the, the spiders and things that fall out of that, you know, how do you actually go out in the world and look at things and find things? And so, you know, we bring our tools um, and we, you know, have the kids doing this stuff uh, with us. And we've had, you know, kids that have been, normally the kids on this trip have been somewhere between six or seven up to around 14, right? So we, we sort of have it through you know, early, mid-elementary school, up through middle school, and even just entering high school. 
Um, probably once you're into high school, it might actually be better suited towards the other trip uh, that um, Kristen and Alberto are leading. But certainly, you know, we've been able to handle like a pretty wide range of ages and attention spans uh, within that, uh, within the kids we've had on the trip. Um, and of course, the other part of this is it's not just Lucas and I on this trip, it's also um, some really excellent top notch Costa Rican guides and naturalists that are with us the entire time, uh, teaching us, even as scientists, you know, how to actually identify or see birds. I'm not a very good birder, but I'm a great frogger. Uh, so we learn a lot from the naturalists um, that are, we're with, and, and they really help us and help the kids and the families uh, be able to get the most out of the forests as we're walking through them. All right, next. And we will catch things. So you know, maybe we won't catch uh, sloths and monkeys, but we do catch insects. We'll catch catch plants, catch flowers, take them back to the lab. You know, we we have sort of a makeshift makeshift lab uh, at the lodge, and there, you know, we can get up close and personal with uh, bugs, frogs, flowers. We can take pictures of them, so kids can you know have some sort of professional keepsakes with them of the photographs that we take everything and release it afterwards. But we have a way of, you know, catching stuff, looking at it up close and personal and, and giving kids the opportunity to do that, I think, and the sort of the freedom to just get dirty, um, catch stuff is, is really fun. And it's really uh, exciting to be able to show the kids, uh, how, you know, how scientists actually do this work when they go to the forest. All right, next up. We will do certain different types of activities. So all the images I showed so far are during the day. Of course, uh, every day follows, is followed by a night. So we uh, have plenty of opportunities to uh, look around the forest at night. Um, we can do night hikes, but even just going between you know, your room and the dining lodge, once it's dark, there's frogs calling you know, along the paths. I mean, there's, there's all sorts of fun things to see even just at Silva Verde Lodge without going outside the lodge to the forest or something like that. So there's plenty of opportunity to see the forest in both the daytime and the nighttime. Next. We also do a lot of great activities that are a short drive from Silva Verde. Um, so, you know, we're not driving hours away to, to, you know, do any of these. We're usually within the next 15 to 30 minutes tops. Um, and at those places, we can do activities like this, uh, where we have gone and, uh, and planted sort of biodiversity friendly trees, helping uh, local farms, creating biodiversity corridors, uh, having a, the, the families that we're with, the kids that we're with, have an opportunity to learn more about you know, local people, local farms, the, the sort of connections between farming and you know, the forest. Uh, we have those type of activities. I don't have pictures of them, but we've we've done zip lining in the past and rafting on the river in the past. Um, and those are all ways of sort of seeing the river, seeing the forest from a different angle, you know, whether or not it's from a social angle where we're, you know, talking to people on farms or we're actually like in a boat on a river, uh, seeing the forest from the riverside. Those are all uh, all good opportunities for us. All right, next up. One of the opportunities that is probably among the most popular for all ages is going uh, just a short walk actually away from Selva Verde uh, to a local business that uh, creates chocolate and introduces us to the history of chocolate. How is chocolate made? What's the connection between um, cacao and like local biodiversity? Uh, and that's super fun. Next up. We also do other activities like going out for walks almost every day with our guides lo locally in the forest. We're visiting local farms, we're on the rivers. And you know, all of those are just ways for us to give you a different perspective on the forest and the surrounding areas and, and really how the people and the animals and the forest are all living together and how they interact with each other uh, and to see this sort of as a whole rather than just a few pieces. And I think that's an important sort of part of this trip. All right, last up. All right, so, and at last, just more than anything, you know, I my goal for this in creating this trip with Holbrook was to have, you know, a safe, comfortable, easy place for families to get out in nature and, and have fun and be able to get up close and personal with really amazing animals and plants and and people of Costa Rica, but but also to see firsthand, you know, what scientists do. I'm a scientist, Lucas is a scientist. We can't help but be scientists. Uh, so you know, giving that experience of, of kids interacting with scientists is something that's really important to me. And I, and I think it's a really, um, it's going to be a really exciting, exciting trip. Lucas, do you have anything to add in closing? 
Yeah, I guess the last thing I would add is just sort of reiterating what you're saying. You know, we as scientists, you know, we we do what we do and, and it's kind of part of our souls, you know, it's that sort of thing. And it's it's going to be a lot of fun to, to share with you guys. And and also the other thing is just, um, you know, really to, to understand uh, the natural world, we have to be out in it. And so really getting in there and and touching the plants, the animals and looking at them and, and really getting to know them hands on is the it's the absolute best way to do it. Right. It's so much better than, say, a, a picture book or something like that. And so it's going to be going to be super, super fruitful and uh, just a lot of fun, I think. And, and, you know, it is being offered this year. And just to answer one of the Q&A questions is our, I hope our intention is to hopefully offer this again next year as we have been the last few summers. Great. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate it. I'll turn it back over to Lisa now. And Lisa will give you just a little bit of an overview about the uh, youth photography workshop. Okay, yes. So you've heard about all the amazing things that you can do at Selva Verde and all the learning opportunities. Well, the photo workshop adds all of those amazing things that you saw, but from a different angle. Um, you're with two professional wildlife photographers, you're going to have the opportunity to learn things that cannot be learned in the classroom. Um, you'll have opportunities to take, um, you know, first-hand lessons on photographing frogs, birds, um, sloths, all live and in person. Then we can also add in tropical plants, waterfalls, cloud forest, um, Arnal Volcano with the beautiful, stunning uh, Lake Arnal in the background. And that would include plants, um, you know, animals, and landscape photography. And Kristen has, uh, you know, done the trip and took a lot of the pictures that you've seen. Uh, and now she is going to be joined by um, uh, Alberto. Sorry, my I'm fumbling here. And you know, you can't be in better hands. Now, this program is uh, ideal for teens of all levels of photography and. Um, Kristen will go over um, that information, but it's also um, a great opportunity for people who enjoyed the first trip and want to learn how to capture what they've learned about to take home in a different way. Um, so I am going to turn it over now to the professionals who has all the great information and um, Afterwards, we will all be able to answer questions and help you decide which one of these programs works um, best for you and your family. Thank you, Lisa. Um, and thanks, Dave and Lucas, too, for talking about the Family Rainforest Camp. Um, my name is Kristen Grace, and I am the resident photographer at the Natural History Museum. I've been the photographer at the museum for a little over 11 years now. I've got a degree in photojournalism, so I've got a documentary style to my photography. And um, for the past 10 years at the museum, I have been teaching nature photography camps um, and workshops. And so getting out and exploring nature with cameras is uh, just an incredible experience. Um, there's so much to get out of it and seeing our world with cameras is just a really special way to kind of document um, nature around us and, and really develop a relationship with our natural surroundings. Um, Alberto has accompanied me on some of my photography camps and we've done workshops together. We have a lot of fun teaching um, museum folks about getting out with cameras. And so we really hope to do the same in Costa Rica. Um, some of the pictures you're going to see might look a little familiar because I did go on the last um, family rainforest camp and I had the, the great honor to document that camp and it was really, I mean, magical is an understatement. It's really an amazing place and there's no shortage of amazing stuff to witness and see and learn about and photograph. Um, so I'm going to uh, let Alberto introduce himself. So next slide, please. Hi, everyone. So I'm briefly just going to talk a little bit about my background, but I'm going to hand it over again back to Kristen. But anyways, I'm, my name is Alberto Lopez, and I'm the Youth Outreach Coordinator at the Florida Museum of Natural History. But I'm also a conservation biologist, an educator, and a wildlife photographer, originally from Puerto Rico. And I really specialize in tropical biodiversity, mainly actually with reptiles and amphibians. And um, you can put the next slide. And really, I've, I've used photography as a tool 
for the research that I've done. And I also use photography as a tool to help other researchers, but mainly I've used photography as an education tool, a tool to be able to inspire others to conserve nature. And I guess uh, my favorite type of photography, the photography that I have a passion for, since my background is in reptiles and amphibians, it is macro photography, especially of course, photos of amphibians, I like the picture that you're seeing right here, right now. Um, so in this trip, I hope to have a chance to show you all how to be able to achieve and take pictures similar to this one right here, all the tips and trick techniques um, you know, behind this picture. Um, but at the same time, you, you could put the next slide, I also hope to uh, be able uh, to show you, um, and, and Dave touched a little bit on this, how to find these subjects, because really, you know, you might know all the different tips and techniques on how to take these pictures, but the most important thing is to be able to find a subject to take a photograph of. So I'll also, uh, you know, show you all how to be able to find these subjects, and most importantly, how to do this in a very ethical way without disturbing them. So I'm really excited for this trip, really excited to see amphibians just like the one that you're seeing on this picture, and just exploring the amazing biodiversity in Costa Rica through our lenses. Thanks, Alberto. So what should you bring? All right, if you're gonna come on this trip, um, any camera is a great camera. We all have cameras in our pockets right now. Everybody's carrying a camera. Um, your smartphone, your tablet, they all have cameras. Um, so everyone's a photographer. We hope that if you come you know, with your family as a group, that at least one member of the family will have a DSLR, a camera that has the ability to change lenses and that you'll have a couple different lenses to bring with you. Um, it would be great if you could also have a laptop per family or per group. Um, we are in the evening times, we're gonna do critiques. Um, so you'll wanna be able to have your laptop to do some post-processing and be able to submit your photos. Um, so the evening time will give us a chance to dig deeper into some of those techniques and improve photography and maybe iron out some of the the challenges that you face during the day and then we can go back the next day and try to um, take the next step in improving photography and skill and technique um, so having those things with you will be helpful on this trip and then if you've got a telephoto lens or a way to to zoom in uh, would be great we are going to see some wildlife from a distance so having that ability will be wonderful um, it not necessary, but some of the farther away animals will be harder to photograph. Um, but like I said, any type of camera, if you've got a point and shoot camera, we're going to be talking about all kinds of photographic techniques that you don't necessarily need a fancy camera to achieve. So, you know, just improving photography all around and coming home with better pictures all together. Next slide, please. So this workshop is designed, as it was mentioned before, for kind of teens at 14 to 18 range where you're interested in photography, you want to learn a little bit more about photography, and then adults that are new to photography. Maybe you've got an interest, maybe you've got a new camera, you got one for Christmas, and you just can't figure out how to make it work for you. Um, or you only know how to use it on that automatic setting, right? And you want to challenge yourself and, and learn more. Bring those cameras, and we'll teach you how to use them in this setting. And what better way to learn how to use your camera than in Costa Rica with this amazing wildlife? Um, and then it's right there, as Dave mentioned, it's literally out the back door. So you don't have to go far to really grab some amazing stuff. Like this mantis here was just on a log. We took a hike around the lodge and there he was cleaning his antennae. So um, be able to take close up photos, telephoto uh, photos, and then learning all different types of composition. Um, and then again, we'll have those critiques in the evening. So next slide, please. Uh, Holbrook and Selva Verde has an incredible relationship uh, with the local guides, as was mentioned before. Um, they're immensely knowledgeable about the wildlife in the area. And so they bring these amazing scopes and they help us find the wildlife that we wanna photograph. And then the next slide, please. All we have to fo focus on is making that image, right? Composing, finding the light. And so they will help us um, basically take the hard work out of it and help us find that wildlife. And then we just can really focus on our skill and technique of making a great picture. Uh, next slide, please. We're gonna practice photographing water. Water is one of the most challenging things to photograph. We're gonna be kind of getting up close and from a distance and all different angles of a waterfall, a couple different waterfalls and how to take those iconic um, photos where you capture the motion of a waterfall. So really just learning how to make our cameras work for us and make the best picture possible with all these amazing features that 
are in the area. Um, and then next slide, please. In addition to, to seeing waterfalls, we're going to go on the water on this amazing river um, that's just teeming with wildlife. So um, we'll see a completely different set of, of plants and animals that are in and around the river. Uh, go ahead and go to the next slide. So from the boat, you'll be able to see water birds, um, all different kinds of wildlife. So that's where those telephoto lenses will come in handy as well. Some of the things on the banks might be a little further away, but we'll practice. We'll practice how to see these things and how to compose these pictures as we're going down the river. <clears throat> next slide, please. And then if we're not seeing wildlife, just how to make those kind of iconic uh, travel photos, you know, see a, a unique pop of color, this pop of blue and a sea of green just stood out to me as something interesting. And so learning how to compose those photos as well. And next slide, please. We're also going to look up close. Alberto mentioned macro photography is one of his favorites. It's one of mine as well. Um, it's really easy to walk by teeny tiny stuff and not even notice it. So we're going to practice slowing down and really observing our surroundings. We're going to look under leaves. We're going to look under flowers. And here this ant is carrying a little nectar bubble up you know, the, to the top of this flower. And so seeing the world up close and really taking a look uh, at the tiny things too. Next slide, please. Uh, it was mentioned night walks. We're going to do those as well, but we're going to do them with our camera. So we're going to learn how to um, take night photography, do night photography photos. Um, the night walks we can illuminate with simple headlamps and flashlights. So this picture, what you're seeing here, the lodge is to your right and to the left is the trail. So literally you're hiking right beside the lodge and we're illuminating the trail with some high powered flashlights and um, headlamps. And then if you go to the next slide, please, We'll practice how to take night photography with using just your headlamp and how to um, kind of challenge your camera, push your camera in low light uh, situations to, there's a whole different set of insects and animals that come out at night. And so practicing that night photography and seeing what we see. Next slide, please. And then we're gonna go beyond just taking a pretty picture. We're gonna learn how to use photography as a tool for storytelling and citizen science. And uh, you, you'll come away with a better understanding of the unique flora and fauna that Costa Rica has to offer and its role in the um, ecosystem there. So we're really gonna dig into the stories behind our photos as well. Um, Alberto, do you wanna add anything? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm super excited and you know, um, the opportunity also to use photography as a tool to uh, help conserve these different places. We'll learn a little bit about what iNaturalist and what that is and how to use your photographs that you've taken throughout this trip and contribute them to science. So that's going to be quite an amazing experience. Yeah, that's it. So we hope you'll join us um, for some great photography in Costa Rica. Great. great. Thank, Thank you, you, Kristen and Alberto. Thank you. Um, ahead, <laughs> I just wanted to close, um, you know, with a little extra information for those of you who want to see more Costa Rica. Our butterflies and beaches extension is a really great opportunity. It's short, only four more days onto um, the program. Um, after the camp, you'll head over to El Bosque Nuevo to see where the Florida Museum of Natural History purchases um, a lot of the, the pupa that makes its way into the butterfly rainforest. While there, you will visit the greenhouses and get a behind the scenes look at the butterfly breeding process and each stage of metamorphosis. After that, um, You'll head on over to the Pacific Coast where well, you'll have a nice um, afternoon um, enjoying the beach. And then in the evening, you get a very special experience um, to witness uh, the beautiful phenomenon of bioluminescence as it lights up the bay. Um, the next day, you go to the airport and return home. So if you want to spend a little more time in Costa Rica, aside from the two programs, this extension will be a great opportunity to add in a, a couple other areas of the country. Um, so we are going to do some questions, um, allow questions, but I did want to cover that um, 
right now, uh, the COVID protocols and entry requirements for Costa Rica, um, first we'll start with Holbrook's policy is that all of our um, participants must be fully vaccinated. There is no longer any type of testing to, um, to go into Costa Rica for COVID, um, nor do you need to purchase any special insurance or, or anything like that. There is testing required to return to the US per CDC um, rules, and that is 24 hours prior to returning to the US and Holbrook will help make all the arrangements for, for the testing as needed. And we will provide that information um, prior to your departure. Another um, last note is that Holbrook is happy to assist with flights. Uh, in addition to the land program, we have an air coordinator who will be happy to assist you. If you choose to purchase your own flights, that is fine, but we do ask that everybody arrive before 2.30 p.m. Um, on the day of the start of each program. That is because from the airport, everyone heads right on out to Selva Verde to start the um, the, the camp and the photo workshop. Great, thank you, Lisa. Um, so at this point, we'll go ahead and open it up for uh, questions. So if you do have any questions, uh, you can type those into the Q&A box in your control panel and uh, we'll share those with our panelists. Um, I'll start in with uh, one that we have here just to clarify, um, I think uh, we touched on this a little bit, but just to, so that everybody's clear, um, can can our museum guests just clarify what the age ranges are for both of these programs? Um, Dave, I'll start with you for the uh, Rainforest Camp. Yeah, sure. Um, I think you know we we've had as young as six. Uh, that that we that was fine. Um, I think in the past, our oldest kid was maybe fourteen or fifteen. I do think that it probably once you hit sort of high school. Um, I would probably direct you more towards the photography camp. I think that'll be at a little bit higher level. As people know, like with kids, it's hard to juggle everything between, you know, six-year-olds and 18-year-olds. So um, I, I think, you know, for the, the Rainforest Family Camp, certainly older kids are fine. Um, but I think sort of a, a great sweet spot is somewhere between, say, you know, six and 13, really. Great, thank you. And then Kristen, I know you said 14 to 17 for uh, the photo camp. And um, it, you said also that adults um, can attend as well. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So um, 14 to 17, we are going to be digging into some, you know, challenging technique and, and kind of critique. And um, so, you know, up, up a level um, in the photography skill. And, uh, and so I think that 14 to 17 range is a great range. We're gonna be adventuring out a little further than the family rainforest camp goes, um, going to the volcano and out to a couple of different areas to really practice those photography skills. So maybe a little longer distance travel and hiking. Um, and then, you know, adults that are new to photography that really wanna learn how to grasp those skills are also welcome. And okay. I should point out that, um, for the any attendees that are in that 14 to 17 age range should have an adult or family member accompanying them as well. Okay, and that's true for the rainforest camp as well, correct? Yes. Can I can I add one thing there? Um, sure. Just thinking about older kids. So uh, because older kids also qualify as adults. <laughs> a little bit. So uh, one of the things that I am in eager to do is because we have four scientists and naturalists on the on the family trip, right? We've got Lucas and I and we'll have two Costa Rican guides. That provides us an opportunity to have the kids all do something and then the adults potentially do something else that may be at a higher level or nothing else if they prefer. But, you know, if the, if the adults want like a long sweaty hike in the rainforest for an afternoon that we're probably not going to drag a seven year old on, we have that flexibility. Um, and we'll, to some extent, we'll play that by ear, you know, just kind of seeing what everybody's abilities are, what the age ranges are uh, when we arrive. Um, but because we have four of us leading it, it means that, you know, if we had, you know, a kid that was in high school who's on the trip because he's got, you know, he or she's got a lot of younger 
siblings or something, um, you know, that, that older kid could go either way. You know, they could do things with the, uh, the adults to take a long hike or they could hang out with us. So I think by having the four leaders really effectively, Lucas and I, plus our guides, um, you know, it gives us some flexibility for kind of doing things at different levels within the rainforest family camp. Yeah, and I wanted to add that as um, the last trip I went and I, I took my daughter, um, who's seven, and there were grandparents, as he said, several sets of grandparents, and not they did not want to participate in everything. Sometimes they stayed back at the lodge and enjoyed the pool looking, you know, bird watching and, and or laying in a hammock. So, you know, for adults, a lot of the activities are optional. Um, so you don't have to stick to a strict schedule. So, you know, if you're accompanying a grandchild or other family members and you're adult, there will still be plenty of activities for you to do. And you're not required to participate in everything. So there's a little bit more flexibility. And if you want your kids to go off and with Dave and, and do some learning and you wanna stay back with a book in the hammock, then you'll have some, you know, alone time in the rainforest to relax. Good point. Yeah, great. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'll put this question to uh, Dave and Lucas. Um, Kristen talked about the camera equipment needed for the youth photography camp. Is there any special equipment needed for the rainforest camp? No. Um, you know, I'd encourage anybody coming on the trip to have, I don't know if these are special equipment or not, but you can tell from this picture, rain jackets are great. Uh, planning <laughs> on it raining is a good thing. You know, some days we start off on a walk and it's not raining and then halfway through the walk, it is raining. So, you know, being able to be prepared for, you know, this is a forest, it's a rainforest. So being able to be prepared for rain is great. Umbrellas, they don't work that great in the rainforest. You know, rain jackets, ponchos, something like that. Uh, good boots, you know, walking boots. And these are walking boots that will probably get dirty, you know. So, um, you know, a good pair of shoes and boots to walk in the forest, you know, it's not paved, you know, in the forest. So these are trails that we're walking on, um, and rain jackets. To me, those are sort of the two biggest items that are really important. The, the two extras that you will benefit from, one is a flashlight or a headlamp, you know, even, even a, you know, $15 headlamp or something that you can order, totally fine. Um, and I think the other is, you know, a camera or something. I, look, I just went to Chile for two weeks and I didn't bring an actual camera. I just brought my phone and it was fine. Um, and I think, you know, even just being able to have a way to take pictures, to see things in the dark, to be comfortable when it's raining and it make sure you have shoes that are going to, you know, work for you. Flip flops in the forest are not a great idea. So to me, those are sort of the four most important parts. I'll also just add, because um, I've actually traveled in Costa Rica now twice with my own kids. Um, and including having an ear infection one time from all the swimming we did. You know what, if, if there's an emergency like that, there's also pharmacies just a few minutes away by taxi. I mean, we, I've been able to, you know, in that case, get eardrops for my son as antibiotics. So there, there are things, you know, just nearby that we can get if we need to, if an emergency like that arises. Can I add Thank something? You. Dave brought up a good point. It does, um, and that is something for, for the photography camp, you'll want to bring a way to protect your gear. Um, if you've got a waterproof uh, backpack cover, some camera bags will come with a, a waterproof cover that will slip over the bag, or you can just bring a garbage bag, just something that you can throw your equipment in because we will be hiking along and it'll just start to pour all of a sudden. And then a few minutes later, the sun's back out. And so just a quick way to throw everything in something to protect your gear. And then you'll be able to pull it right back out because it, it generally kind of is off and on, um, but you, it can surprise you. Thanks for bringing that up, Dave. Emphasize that, you know, I you can buy really fancy bags <laughs> that are waterproof. You can also buy a crappy backpack you don't worry about if it's going to get wet and have a trash bag inside <laughs> of it, and it does just fine. And so yep. a lot of times I end up doing that in the field for keeping things dry inside, you know, just a cheap backpack I keep with me during the day. Great, thank you. Um, this is a question for Lisa. Lisa, can you talk a little bit, please, about what's included and not included in the trip cost? Okay, yeah, sure. So both of the programs include um, private guide, private bus, all the activities listed, 
all the meals during the program. And we've also included gratuities. So the only things that are not included would be um, extra money for souvenirs, um, snacks, you know, sodas at, at the, the, the restaurant and the bar. Um, and just a little bit extras, but the prices of these programs are pretty inclusive aside from airfare. We um, are happy to assist with that and the rate will depend on where you are flying from. Good to know, okay. And um, you talked about this, Lisa, but just to clarify uh, the COVID test uh, to return to the United States, that is something that Holbrook um, handles, is that correct? Yes, we have been handling that since um, sometime last year for all of our groups, and we have made connections with local clinics and um, testing facilities, and we, um, depending on the schedule, will either have them come to the hotel and do the test, or we will make arrangements to get you there. And um, we will handle all the logistics of that, it will be at the participants expense. And right now the price has been ranging anywhere from 30 to about $65 per person. It is um, a rapid test, it is taken. You have the results by the time you um, head to the airport to check in for your flight. Great, thank you. Um, I think we have time for just one or two more questions. So um, if you have any additional questions, please send those in. Um, before I ask the next question, I will quickly just put in the chat the links to the two programs that we've talked about today. Um, we will also be sending this information out along with a recording of the webinar um, so that you can uh, review that at your, own, at your own pace and on your own time. But uh, those links are in the chat now um, if you'd like to, to review those web pages. Um, next question I'll ask to Kristen and Alberto uh, about the photo workshop. Um, and can you talk about, is there photo instruction in the field in a classroom setting or is it a combination of both? Uh, that's a great question. It is a combination of both. And so I think that first day we're going to uh, get acquainted in a classroom setting. And that's where we'll get the opportunity to really take a, look, a close look at what equipment everybody has um, and figure out the, the nuances of the type of camera that you have and how you might be able to use that particular model in the field. If you're just working with you know something simpler like a, a point and shoot camera or an iPhone, how you might be able to, um, you know, straight out of the gate, improve your pictures and we'll do that in a classroom setting and then we'll hit the ground running and we'll kind of do that day in and day out. So we'll go, you know, we'll learn something in a classroom setting, then we'll go out and apply it in the field and then we'll come back and break it down and answer questions and work through issues and then go back and try again. So there'll be a lot of, you know, that type of experience. And I think we might even have a guest speaker um, that's a local photographer that may join us and um, and share some of their photography that's, that's local to Costa Rica as well. So. Lots of learning opportunities. Great, thank you. Great. Um, so I think we'll go ahead and wrap up. Before we finish up, um, I'd just like to open it up to the panelists and see if there's any final comments or, or last words that you'd like to, to end on. Um, I'll chime in. One is this should be fun. The goal of this is for it to be fun. And it really is about as accessible as I could imagine making a rainforest. Uh, it's a short, relatively short drive from uh, the airport or wherever you're staying in the capital out to the Selva Verde. Selva Verde, we're pretty much at the lodge all week, except for some, you know, short nearby drives. Um, you see things we've seen, actually, for me, even I saw a first literally on the path leading to the dining hall, you know, I wasn't even really in the forest. And so we have abilities to see really neat things uh, without going very far. And if you have a gaggle of children with you, uh, that's great. And I think it really means that we can see a lot and it's a lot of fun. Looking at this picture uh, now in front of me, one, two other things come up as equipment. One is uh, it's nice to have a bag of some kind you can take with you during the day. Um, it's nice to have a bag that kids are willing to carry their own stuff rather than you carry their stuff for them. Um, and water bottles. Um, that was actually something I think that last time we had, we didn't actually have everybody have a bottle with them. And that's that's useful. We might, you know, go over for a couple hours to, before we come back for lunch. And, you know, it's hot. 
uh, it's nice to be able to have water bottles with you. And so having stuff that the kids are also willing to carry on their own so that, you know, dad or mom doesn't end up with like five bags and five water bottles um, is good just for thinking ahead. So anyway, it should be a lot of fun and I'm really looking forward to it. Well, Wait. I would, I'm sorry. No, go, uh, Lisa, I was just going to say, was, I, might, I might add one last thing. Sure, um, go ahead, Lucas. Um, I, I was just going to say, especially with regards to, um, you know, uh, younger people. Um, you know, when I was a kid, I was introduced to the rainforest at a relatively young age. And I have to say it had a pro profound effect on, you know, just sort of my overall outlook um, and my sort of, um, uh, you know, association with, with biology and with plants and with animals. And so, so um, a trip like this can be hugely stimulating and, and super productive for, for, for kids. Yeah. And so I, I'm glad that you said that because I just wanted to say that I did take my daughter. She was seven at the time. This was a child that is afraid of insects horrified of frogs and I thought well this is either going to be an amazing experience or a nightmare um she wants to go back she got close to frogs she was using the pooters to collect ants being around other children and scientists like Dr. Blackburn gave her confidence and really helped her fears. And she learned so much. And like I said, she's ready to go back. And I did see a change in her where she just started to feel comfortable with everything that was going on. And it really helped that there were other kids doing it and really having a great time. And it made her open her mind. And, and it really um, helped her get through some things that she is now ready to do more exploring. And I'm, I'm very happy that she had that opportunity. I love that, Lisa. I'm so happy to hear that because I remember going out on the trails with her when she was initially there and we we're a little apprehensive, but that's, that's so wonderful. And yes. just to add to that, you know, taking it that next level, like, um, we live in such a fast paced society now, and it's really easy to walk by things that are right there and so beautiful. And so using a camera as a tool to encourage slowing down and really observing your world around you is a great way to really fully immerse yourself into your surroundings. And that's something that once you learn how to do that, you can't unlearn it, kind of like riding a bike. You know, you see the world differently when you really learn how to look with a camera. And, um, and so giving kids that tool at a young age is just adding a, another layer on experiencing their surroundings and processing this world around us. You know, photography can be, be a very meditative tool and um, and help you kind of drown out all the noise and really, you know, train focus. So I just wanted to add that to just an, another layer to to experiencing the world around you. Yeah. And, and what a place to do that. Right. Costa oh, my Rica. gosh. I mean, yeah, no, very, I mean, it's, it's just amazing. And, and, you know, like I said before, photography and learning these techniques is going to be critically important, of course, and will add to your uh, skills. But, you know, it's also, it's all about the subjects and Costa Rica has amazing photographic subjects. So what better place to do that and experience that? Uh, I mean, I can't really think of many. So I'm really hoping to meet you all and just show you all how passionate I am about photography. And I'm pretty sure that will be very contagious. And um, if you're not already passionate, I'm pretty sure by the end you will be, or you'll be even more passionate about photography. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'll just say thank you so much to all of our guests, Dave, Lucas, Kristen, Alberto, and Lisa, uh, for sharing your expertise and your insights about these programs. Uh, as we said, today's webinar has been recorded, and we'll be sending out a link uh, to both the recording as well as links to these programs so you can find more information about uh, detailed itineraries and pricing and, and some of the travel requirements and, and some of the other highlights of the program. So uh, we'll be sending that information out. The webinar recording will also be available on our YouTube channel and on our website where you can find all of our past webinars. And with that, we'll go ahead and conclude our presentation today. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you again to our guests and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.